Okay, nerds, I have a bit of a confession to make. I am a Notion purist, so I don't use any of the Notion add-ons, Notion extensions, or anything else that other people are doing outside of the Notion developers. But I do keep track of everything that goes on, all the third-party apps and stuff that goes on in Product Hunt, and the rest of it. So what I thought I'd do in this video is go through all of the extensions that are common or highly recommended in the Chrome browser, in Mac, for Firefox, and some of just the, the Notion extensions that people use in in general. The first extension I want to mention is a Chrome add-on in the browser, which is Save to Notion. And this is basically an extended version of Notion's Clipper, because Notion's Clipper is kind of limited. And what this extension allows you to do is add templates onto the things you've clipped. So it goes to certain databases. And there are loads of other things that you can add on to that. As we scroll down, you can see all of these different features. So save whole page when article is bookmarked, modify page properties directly in the pop-up, apply templates, and basically what what this means is when you clip something from the internet, from Chrome, you can apply a template inside the clipper, or you can apply any of the things in here before it actually goes to your Notion page. So you can see I'm in the edit window and basically you make a form so you can select the form that you want every time you clip something. You can choose the workspace, choose the database any database in your space, and then it goes all the way down and gives you really, really specifics of how and where you want to clip things. The next add-on is the Notion Enhancer, and this is less of an add-on and more of a group or a community building things, loads of different things to add on to Notion. Now, this isn't Chrome specific, and you can see there is a GitHub. I don't use GitHub or Code or any of that. So there is like a GitHub community building area so you can go to and see what's going on. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I don't use add-ons or extensions, but I know a lot of people do use these, and there is a Discord community for you to answer questions, and all the links to the extensions, the add-ons, and the communities will be a, a link in the description below so you can go explore them at your own leisure. But to name just a couple of features that the Notion Enhancer allow you to do, you can auto maximize windows so you don't get that small pop-up, you just go straight into the page that you're going into. You can add tabs into Notion just like you are in a browser, you have the tabs across the top and you can have different pages across the top. There are lots of different aesthetic changes that you can make, such as integrated scroll bars, snappy transitions, thicker bold text, there's loads of things like that. And as I carry on scrolling down, you can see you've got backend links, bypass previews. There are loads and loads and loads of other things. I will just keep scrolling so you can pause them as you go. But there are loads of things in this expander and there is a community of loads of developers and people building different things onto this. And something a lot of people I think will like is the weekly view. So they've actually managed to reduce that calendar view from a month to a week, which is very, very nice. And I know some people will want that. Now, aside from changing Notion, there are lots of different places that you can have widgets, build your own widgets, have your own widgets, and you can put them into your Notion page. The first one that comes to mind is Indify. And what Indify allows you to do is it allows you to embed a Google Calendar widget into your Notion. So it's the same as the Notion embed, it just looks better. There is a weather widget, so you can have the weather inside your Notion page. A life progress bar, which you can build in Notion, but it looks much, much different with the Indify embed. Countdowns, quotes, counters, there's loads of other different widgets that you can use in Indify. And again, I'll leave the link in the description. And on top of some of these aesthetic widgets, you can also get more statistical widgets, such as the ones from Notion Metrics. And you can see Notion Metrics actually allows you to show certain pieces of data inside your Notion page from ConvertKit and other places like that. So it's definitely worth exploring if you use some of these things in your business. Another stats widget you could use is VisiDrop, and this basically does the same sort of thing as Notion Metrics. It just displays the information slightly different, and obviously there are different people making them. So your personal preference is going to change which widget you go to, but I'm going to leave that down to you to explore because there's so many different things that you can explore when it comes to the widgets on both of these different options. A quick mention at this point as well is Chart Nerd is also another stats type widget that you can put into Notion, but for some reason on my computer it doesn't work very well. So like I say, all of these add-ons, extensions, they are outside of Notion, so some of them may cause a couple of bugs here and there or may not work for you. So that's a case of you troubleshooting with them. That's personally why I'm a Notion purist and I don't use any of the add-ons, but I'm still sharing them. Another good website to find different widgets you want to put into Notion is Aption, I think is how it's pronounced, Aption. Uh, but you can go into Aption and you can see you've got DIY URL, mail form, link, and there are loads of other widgets that you can see scrolling down. And these widgets allow you to do lots of different things inside of Notion on your Notion page. So it's definitely worth having a look through all the different options that they offer. 
Now I know lots of people like to have different icons in their Notion pages, so I thought I'd share a couple of websites that you can actually get different icons from. So Hero Icons is one that you may not have heard of, but it's the same as most of the other icon places. You can go onto the icon, click select, and you can put them into your Notion space. These are very, very nice icons and there are loads of them, so I'm not gonna go through them all. Another website is Angular Icons, and Angular Icons, again, is just full of different icons, but they are different styles. So you can see there's loads and loads of ones here, and I believe I believe some of these icons are premium as well. You can see up here. So some of these you may have to pay for, but that's personal preference. I personally build my own icons inside of Affinity Photo. You could use something like Photoshop or just Canva or Paint or something like that and build them in there. But these are some options. And then of course you have Notion icons from Notion VIP, Will Nuts website, and you, and you can go onto this page and you can see there's all of the icons and you can actually change these from light mode to dark mode, which is quite nice. So you can see how they both look. When it comes to hosting a website through Notion or on Notion, there are a few different options you have. Super.so is probably the most frequently used one that I have seen within the community, and you can basically make your Notion page have a pretty link at the top, so it is your own domain, and then there's loads of other options that Super offer, and I'm sure other people will be able to go into more depth that use this, but like I say, with me, with a website, I use a WordPress website, and then just have a link going to my Notion page, but you can use super.so fruition, which is the next one on the list, which also allows you to put your custom domain into your Notion page, but Fruition, I believe, is a little bit more of a hands-on approach, whereas Super kind of does it for you, but then I haven't done it, so I can't speak too heavily on that. And then Host Notion is also another option to do basically the same thing, host your website, your page on Notion with a pretty domain and lots of other different things. Now, assuming you're using your Notion page as a public page or as a website, you may want to have a form inside of Notion. Now, natively, there isn't a form in Notion, but you can use an add-on such as Chili Pepper, and Chili Pepper allows you to embed a form into your Notion page, and then you'll get the results inside of Notion. So this is a very, very nice option for forms inside of Notion. Next up, we have a Wonder Presentation. And what this basically does is it allows you to turn your Notion pages into a presentation, very similar to slides or PowerPoints or anything like that. But you can actually use your Notion pages to do it. And like it says on here, you can see if I push play, we can go through a live demo of the page. So this is the Notion page, and then it's gonna to go to the next slide, which is here. And that's the next section. So you can see, you can pick what part of the page is the slide. So this is a very, very nice little add-on that I came across Across not too long ago actually. Now I'm going to go to a couple of Chrome extensions. So Notion Boost is the first one that comes to mind. So if we scroll down, you can see the overview. You can show sticky outline. So that's the table of contents to the right hand side of your page. So you can so you don't have to go all the way to the top, it's just there. You can set the small text or the width of pages by default. So you can automatically say full width page and it will give you a full width page every time or small text every time. And then there are a few other additions that you can have inside of your Notion page with the Notion Boost, but the full width page is the main reason for me that I experimented and tested it out. This next Chrome extension took me by surprise. It's actually much, much better than I thought it was gonna be, and that's no, like, no shade thrown to the developers or anything like that, but it's actually doing a lot of what I think a lot of people would want. So Evergreen Notes. Evergreen Notes basically does what Rome does inside of Notion. So Notion's backlinks, references, you can see all of that in a sidebar, which is very nice. So if I go into my Notion page, I've actually got this one onto Notion because I needed to explore it more. So you can see there's the backlinks, there's the mentions in the page, the unlinked references, which is a very nice feature, similar notes. And then you can come up here and you can see all the different stuff, all the different stuff that's going on. So there's that table of content that the Notion Boost does so there's kind of overlapping features with a lot of these add-ons and you can just hide it away quite simply in this small little circle up here which is very very nice like I, like i say i haven't used any of these add-ons extensively but this does seem like a very useful tool for people that are taking lots of notes with notion Moving on to a Mac specific extension, Nifty Man is an extension. I don't have a Mac, so again, I haven't used this, but this has been recommended by lots of Mac users. And basically what it allows you to do is tag different pages in, I think this is the, your, your top bar. I don't really know what it's called. I'm not a Mac user, sorry. Um, but it allows you to tag different pages at the top of your 
of your, I don't even know what it's called, menu bar. There you go, your Mac menu bar. So you can you can bring your emoji icons to Mac's menu bar, which is pretty cool. Um, so Mac users, there you go. Again, links will be in the description to all of these add-ons and extensions. And when it comes to Firefox specific extensions, there were so many that were brought up and mentioned that I just, I just can't go through them all. But there were some that piqued my interest. This first one being pinned Notion. So what this allows you to do if you're in Firefox is pin Notion to your your tab bar, your taskbar, whatever it's called in Firefox, um, which is very, very nice if you are a frequent Notion user and you use it on Firefox. I personally use the app, so this wouldn't be useful for me, but I know people that use Notion in their browser, this would be very, very useful just to have it there. The next one is Notion Plus Mark Manager. Now, this one I had to actually have a look because I didn't quite understand what it was going on about, but basically, whenever you, whenever you color something, you color text, you put a comment on a text, or anything like that, it gives you an option at the top right, very similar to the Evergreen Notes extension. It gives you that option and then you can jump between colored notes. So if you have highlighted notes, you can jump between all of those different notes from that kind of like table of contents, which is very nice. And then for those Notion users that read things from right to left, there's actually better Notion RTL. So what this does, I believe, is it puts Notion from right to left. At the moment, Notion doesn't do that. It's just left to right. But if you are reading right to left, this is a Firefox extension that could be useful to you. If there are any other extensions or add-ons or things that you think should have been mentioned or that you are developing, do let me know in the comments below so that I can see what's going on and maybe I could do another video in future. But until then, if you want to learn more about some productivity apps on Notion, click one of these two videos and I will see you there.